Now, back in 1996, uh, I built small electrolyzers, which eventually became the ER50, by the way. But they were made out of transparent PVC plastic, so I could actually look inside and see what was happening. And I discovered something that I had never seen before. In all the physics courses that I'd taken, all the books that I had read, I saw something that had never been described before in any electrolysis. I saw a line of gas coming up right in the middle of the cell. I saw hydrogen coming off the cathode. I saw oxygen coming off the anode. And I saw a line of gas coming right out of the fluid itself. I did not know what that was. <laughs> but it was there. And as an inventor, I, I'm not like a scientist. That's, uh, yeah, that's normal for a simple electrolyzer design, is it not? No. No, absolutely. No. The, okay. the hydrogen and the oxygen is normal, but this this uh, bubbles that are mm -hmm. coming out of the fluid. Now, of course, in, in normal electrolyzers, the solution gets full of bubbles really fast. So it, it seems like there's bubbles coming right out of the solution because the hydrogen and oxygen infuse into the uh, fluid. And so there's hydrogen and oxygen bubbles in there. But what I'm talking about is when you first start it up and there's no hydrogen and oxygen bubbles in the solution itself, bubbles were being formed in the center of the electrolyzer that were not attached or formed by either electrode. It was coming right out of the solution. So this was absolutely unique. Now, there's been other people that have uh, developed Brown's gas machines uh, with this design before me, so it wasn't unique to me, but it was unique to my experience. It was the first time I'd seen it, and it's the first time anyone has reported it, as far as I know, so back in 1996. All right. so. I, I started to, and, and this is one of the things about an inventor and in, in inventing, once in a while you see something and then it, it becomes a passion and, you, uh, and you're able to do more things with it. Okay, so it turns out that what this is, it, 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 the most workable theory hypothesis at, at the moment and it's been uh, um, being tested like with the University of Washington and a lot of other places as well, is that this is a plasma form of water. So my electrolyzers, you remember I was saying they were twice as efficient as the uh, Brown's gas ones that you could buy kind of thing. One of the reasons was right. I had optimized it for making this particular gas, which we call electrically expanded water. So it's a plasma form, of, electron rich plasma form of water. So it's negatively charged plasma. It's actually water. See, my electrolyzers were actually making gas 130% efficient, which means there was 30% more gas than theoretically possible by the Faraday equations, which had been, I don't know, 150 years at that time, Faraday had invented them, and no one had ever had an electrolyzer get over 100% efficient. So there was, a, there was a gas that was happening in that electrolyzer. That, it wasn't over 100% efficient, by the way. What was happening is, is electrically expanded water is another gas that's a side effect of the electrolysis and that isn't part of the Faraday equations. So okay, as yeah, the, it's uh, an additional gas that's not hydrogen or oxygen, and it's contributing to the volume and the pressure. Exactly, you got it. Okay. okay.